When a breaker trips, current won't flow through the circuit until the breaker is reset, that is, until its contacts are closed. To reset this breaker, the switch is first turned to the off position, then to the on position. Not all breakers trip in the same way. Some breakers have internal devices, such as electrical coils, that sense excessive current and open the contacts. Other breakers use separate external devices called relays to do the same thing. Relays sense abnormal circuit conditions and send a signal that trips the breaker. One common type of relay is an overcurrent relay. Overcurrent relays protect equipment from damage caused by excessive current flow. Another type of relay, called an undervoltage relay, protects equipment from damage caused by lower than normal voltages. Motors and other equipment are normally rated for a certain voltage. Too little voltage can cause a dangerous increase in current flow. Circuit breakers and related components are often enclosed in separate housings that are grouped together. The housings are electrically isolated from each other so that the breaker for one circuit can be worked on without affecting the other circuits. The housings also protect personnel from coming into contact with the high voltages inside. If abnormal conditions develop in an electrical circuit, a circuit breaker may trip. Before the breaker is reset, it's important to try to determine the cause of the trip so that any necessary repairs can be made. Resetting a breaker without first checking for the cause of the trip could damage the breaker and other equipment, and it could create unsafe working conditions for personnel. Let's watch as this operator goes through a basic procedure for resetting a tripped circuit breaker. Keep in mind that whenever you're involved in this sort of procedure, you should always follow your company's safety regulations. In this example, the breaker that has tripped is used to protect a motor, but the same general procedure can be applied to other circuits as well. First, the operator checks the motor for obvious signs of damage, such as overheating. He also checks to make sure that there are no obstructions that might prevent the motor's shaft from rotating freely. Then he checks the input power cable for signs of damage that could have caused a short circuit or a ground. Either condition could trip a breaker. After finding no obvious problems with the motor, the operator goes back to the circuit breaker and resets it. Then he returns to the motor and tries to start it. If the breaker trips again, he'll report the trouble. He won't keep trying to restart the motor because that could damage the motor and the breaker. The time delay allows time for the motor to cool before it can be restarted. The procedure that we just saw dealt with the protective function of a circuit breaker interrupting current flow to protect a load, such as a motor. Another procedure, known as racking out a breaker, can be used to physically lock out a load from its source of power so that de-energized equipment can be worked on safely. Racking out a breaker involves physically disconnecting the breaker from its electrical connections. Let's watch this operator go through a procedure for racking out a breaker. First, he makes sure that he's got the correct breaker. He doesn't want to cut off power to the wrong circuit. Then he opens the breaker's contacts using a local switch. Keep in mind, though, that some breakers are opened from a remote location, such as a control room. For this breaker, the operator reinserts the fuse block upside down. This maintains a physical break in the control circuit so the breaker can't be operated. The off label indicates that even though the block is in place, the circuit is still de-energized. Now the breaker can be physically disconnected. Here, that's done by releasing a latch and sliding the breaker out of its enclosure. An indicator on the side of the enclosure shows when the breaker has been disconnected. Often, the controlling link between a plant's electrical distribution system and individual pieces of electrical equipment is a switch Basically, a switch is a device that can be opened or closed to start or stop current flow in a circuit. There are a lot of different types of switches in a plant, and they can serve different purposes. For example, these disconnect switches are used to isolate circuits in an electrical distribution system. Other types of switches include limit switches, which help regulate the movement of mechanical equipment, 
and pressure switches, which respond to changes in pressure by opening or closing an electrical circuit. Switches can also be used to help isolate electrical equipment so that maintenance work can be performed safely. Most control panels contain many switches that can be used to start, stop, and position equipment. Switches can also be located at or near the equipment they're associated with. In order to properly control equipment and processes, operators need to know how to operate a variety of switches. Two types of switches that operators commonly use are push-button switches and rotary switches. Push-button switches can vary in design. For example, when some push-button switches are pushed in, they stay in on their own. Others must be pressed and held as long as the switch is expected to operate. When the push-button is released, the circuit is de-energized. Still other push-button switches are simply pressed and released to complete an electrical circuit. Push-button switches can have various features, including lights to indicate whether equipment is on or off, and labels to indicate the push button's functions. As long as the button is held down, the equipment cannot be started up from a remote location. Another type of switch that operators sometimes work with is a rotary switch. Rotary switches are rotated to start, stop, or position equipment. As with push button switches, rotary switches can vary. With some rotary switches, the switch stays in the position that it's turned to. With others, the switch returns to a certain position after it's turned. For example, the normal position for this switch is in the center. Regardless of how the switch is turned, it always returns to the center when it's released. Some rotary switches require a separate physical movement in addition to the rotation of the switch. For example, this switch must be pushed in and rotated to operate a piece of equipment, and pulled out to stop the equipment. Many rotary switches are designed to prevent accidental operation. For example, this rotary switch has a removable handle. The handle can be taken off when it's important to keep the switch at a particular setting. Inside the transformer casing are the windings. The windings are usually mounted on an iron core, which concentrates the magnetic field produced in the windings. In this topic, we examined the basic operation of a circuit breaker, and we looked at steps involved in resetting and racking out a circuit breaker. We also saw how different types of switches operate. Now try some practice questions on this material. When inspecting the transformer's radiators, remove any paper or debris that might be blocking the radiators and interfering with cooling. One type of component that's found throughout a plant's electrical distribution system is a circuit breaker. Circuit breakers serve as protective devices, and they also provide a way to isolate electrical equipment from a source of power. When it functions as a protective device, a circuit breaker helps prevent excessive current from damaging circuits and equipment. A circuit breaker is able to do this because it has electrical contacts that open or trip to interrupt current flow to a circuit. When it functions as an isolating device, a circuit breaker is tripped by personnel to isolate equipment from a source of electric power. This allows equipment to be locked out of service so that it can be worked on safely. Another procedure, known as racking out a breaker, can be used to physically lock out a load from its source of power so that de-energized equipment can be worked on safely. Racking out a breaker involves physically disconnecting the breaker from its electrical connections. Often, the controlling link between a plant's electrical distribution system and individual pieces of electrical equipment is a switch. Basically, a switch is a device that can be opened or closed to start or stop current flow in a circuit. There are a lot of different types of switches in a plant, and they can serve different purposes. For example, these disconnect switches are used to isolate circuits in an electrical distribution system. Other types of switches include limit switches, which help regulate the movement of mechanical equipment, and pressure switches, which respond to changes in pressure by opening or closing an electrical circuit. 